Seni punya nyawa. Seni punya kuasa. Seni mencetuskan perasaan yang tiada taranya. Seni merupakan pemacu negara. Seni menyatukan kita dalam meraihkan dan menyalurkan tenaga kita ke haluan baru. Pelaburan demi kesenian Malaysia adalah pelaburan demi jiwa kita. Seni mewakili sejarah terindah dan masa depan kita. Cendana mendorong kita ke hadapan. Sini kita bangkit. Hai, salam dan selamat datang semua ke Open Arts Classes Anjuran Cendana. Nama saya Yana Rizal dan saya moderator untuk sesi hari ini. Open Arts Classes ialah sebuah siri kelas seni di bawah program Arts in the City oleh Cendana. Open Arts Classes ataupun OAC berlangsung daripada 29 Oktober sehingga 21 November 2021. OAC menampilkan penggiat seni negara yang termasyhur untuk berkongsi pengalaman dan juga kepakaran mereka dalam bidang seni masing-masing. Jadi jika anda berminat untuk tahu lebih lanjut tentang OAC dan Arts in the City, sila layari laman web www.bskl.com.my/aitc. Jadi sebelum kita mulakan, saya ingin bacakan uh, terlebih dahulu beberapa peraturan untuk sesi ini. Untuk memastikan kualiti audio yang jelas, kami akan menutup mikrofon dan video anda sepanjang sesi melainkan semasa sesi soal jawab. Kami juga akan merakam sesi ini. Sila kongsikan soalan anda di ruangan chat dan moderator akan mengemukakan soalan tersebut ketika sesi soal jawab. Harap hormati semua peserta sepanjang sesi ini dan sila perkenalkan diri anda di ruangan chat. Kami juga menghargai sokongan anda dalam mengisi borang maklum balas, pautan akan diberikan di ruangan chat. Sila elakkan penggunaan bahasa kesat, maklum balas yang tidak membina atau meninggalkan komen spam. Kegagalan untuk menghormati sesi ini, pihak penganjur mempunyai hak untuk mengeluarkan peserta tersebut. Jadi sesi kita hari ini bertajuk tenunan songket semasa pandemik bersama Tanuti Crafts di mana kita akan belajar sedikit tentang kerumitan proses penghasilan fabric songket tenunan tangan, mengetahui sedikit tentang perkembangan komuniti penenun Tanuti sekarang ini dan juga menyentuh uh, tentang inovasi yang telah dilahirkan dalam komuniti ini. Jadi sedikit pengenalan tentang Tanuti Crafts. Tanuti terdiri daripada komuniti pencipta craft yang berpusat di Kuching, Sarawak. Perusahaan sosial ini bermula pada tahun 2012 sebagai bengkel tenunan songket yang terdiri daripada 13 orang penenun. Pada hari ini, Tanuti telah melibatkan lebih daripada 400 pembikin craft yang kebanyakannya dari kawasan luar bandar dan juga daripada kawasan pedalaman Sarawak. Dan bersama kita hari ini ialah Jacqueline Fong atau lebih mesra dikenali sebagai Jackie yang merupakan pengasas Tanuti Crafts. Good morning Jackie, how are you today? Good morning, selamat pagi. Hi, it's a beautiful day in Kuching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great having you, Jackie. Um, okay, so sebelum kita mulakan, uh, kami ingin ambil foto dulu dengan semua peserta dalam sesi ni. Jadi saya minta semua orang untuk pasangkan kamera masing-masing. Lihat kamera, senyum. Kalau nak buat gaya masing-masing, sila pun, you know, buatlah sendiri. Ikut sukalah ya. Jadi kita akan ambil gambar sebanyak tiga kali. Saya akan buat countdown uh, sehingga tiga ya. Jadi kita akan mulakan yang pertama. Jadi satu, dua, tiga. Satu, dua, tiga. Lagi satu ya. Satu, dua, tiga. Okay, so let's begin. Over to you, Jackie. Please, take the floor. Happy Sunday, everyone. Selamat hari minggu. Dan terima kasih kerana menyertai sesi ini dengan saya. Nama saya Jackie dan saya pengasas komuniti Tanoti. Saya sekarang berada di bengkel tenunan songket kami dan saya akan melangsungkan program ini dalam bahasa Malaysia dan juga sedikit bahasa Inggeris. Tanuti adalah komuniti artisan dari Sarawak dengan tiga matlamat. Matlamat pertama kami adalah untuk memeliharakan uh, craft warisan dalam bahasa Inggeris, heritage craft preservation. 
Fokus kami adalah dengan karya dan teknik kerja tangan dari nenek moyang dan diwaris dari keluarga atau kaum sebagai turun temurun. Yang kedua adalah permekasaan kaum wanita. Oleh kerana kraft tangan selalunya dikerjakan oleh golongan wanita, usaha untuk membangunkan industri kraft dan juga akan juga menolong membangunkan seluruh kaum wanita. Dan dalam bahasa Inggeris adalah dikatakan bahawa craft has the power to empower women. Pembangunan masyarakat luar bandar dan terpencil adalah yang ketiga uh, maklamat kami. Kami selalu mendapati bahawa taraf hidup sungguh rendah di masyarakat luar bandar dan masyarakat terpencil berbanding dengan uh, taraf hidup di bandar. Di sebaliknya, kemahiran dan sumber kraft tangan adalah tinggi di luar bandar. Objek tanuti adalah untuk memanfaatkan sumber kraft ini untuk menolong artisan dari luar bandar dan kampung-kampung di hulu untuk menjana pendapatan dan dengan itu membangunkan mikroekonomi mereka masing-masing. Malangnya apabila uh, pandemik COVID-19 melanda dunia, semua perajin kraft terasa terjejas. Bagi tukang kraft serta usahawan kraft, pasaran untuk produk kami telah pun lenyap kerana industri pelancongan ditutup pada masa ini. Kami di Tanuti adalah sungguh bersyukur kerana artisan penurunan songket Tanuti House sudi mengambil peluang ini untuk mengaktifkan beberapa projek berasaskan teknik penurunan songket. Dan pada hari ini, kami sekumpulan akan memberi sepintas lalu projek-projek tindak balas COVID kami di Tanuti House. Izinkan saya perkenalkan artisan kami yang ada di bengkel hari ini. Thank you girls. Uh, semua penenun di sini adalah penenun songket dan seperti yang dilihat di sini, semua sekarang mempunyai projek masing-masing di atas ketenun mereka masing-masing. Pada masa pandemik, projek tenunan kami tetap berlangsung. Dalam segmen pertama, cendana Open Arts Class hari ini, kami mahu tunjukkan beberapa proses tenunan songket yang dilalui oleh artisan Tanuti. Yang pertamanya adalah menceluk warna atau dyeing. Ini adalah langkah yang awal dalam proses tenunan. Air harus dihangatkan sampai suhu tinggi antara 75 sampai 80 darjah Celsius. Selepas itu, kami masukkan garam kepada air sebagai penyediaan untuk proses dyeing ini. Air dikacau supaya garam itu larut dengan sepenuhnya. Cuba tengok macam mana dye itu masuk dan diserap oleh air. Di Tanoti kami mempunyai dye resepi atau acuan sendiri dan kami akan kami ada keboleh untuk mendai benang kepada apa-apa warna yang diminta atau diperlukan oleh pelanggan kami. Air ini dikacau berkali-kali. Untuk memastikan warna dye itu serata. And if you can see, we will use up all our dye recipe, or our, our dye uh, concoction, um, to ensure the even, um, the, uh, the even distribution of dye in the in the dye bath. Then dikacau lagi. So the stirring is important because the dye has to be completely evenly distributed. Dan proses ini harus di um, um, dibuat dalam masa satu atau dua jam. Dan selepas itu, cuma tiba masanya untuk mencelup benang ke dalam dye bath ini atau ramuan dye. Tanggungjawab penenun adalah untuk memastikan semua benang berjaya menyerap warna dye dengan setara. 
Ini cara yang digunakan oleh Wani di sini uh, untuk mencelup berkali-kali. So in the process of dying, it is very important that every single strand of thread is able to absorb the dye in a very consistent and standardized manner. And this is how Wani, our weaver, um, does this. Selepas dirawat dengan soda ash untuk menetapkan warna pada benang, benang yang didai itu dijemur di tempat yang berteduh. Dan seterusnya adalah melerai benang. Benang sutra yang ada pada kami adalah dalam bentuk hang macam ini. Ya harusnya dililit supaya tidak putus dan tidak berselirat. Tengok yang yang hang ini adalah um, um, benang, tapi ya tidak um, it's not perfectly combed. Ya um, proses yang saya maksudkan adalah proses melerai dan prosesnya adalah berikut. Di video ini adalah proses melerai benang sutra yang berwarna merah. Benang dilerai dan dimasukkan ke peleting supaya dapat menggunakannya untuk proses seterusnya. Di sinilah penenun kami dedek akan juga menyambung benang yang putus macam ini. Proses ini sungguh penting sebab ia memastikan ketegangan benang semasa proses menenun nanti. So the process of winding the threads is very important because we have to ensure that all the threads are uh, um, have the correct tension and they are not broken. So what you see now is uh, Dede trying to tie um, the broken ends together um, so that it becomes a, a single thread. Selepas uh, melerai, kami kena menyediakan loseng. So loseng itu adalah uh, warp dan kalau dilihat pada setiap kain, benang selalu dia bersilang macam ini. Maknanya ada benang yang jalannya tegak dan ada juga benang yang jalan melintang untuk menjadikan kain. Sekarang kami jelaskan macam mana kami membuat benang yang menegak atau loseng. Loseng dalam bahasa English adalah warp. Inilah um, rak menganing kami, di mana peleting yang penuh dengan benang itu dimasukkan di tiang besi dan benang ditarik untuk mencapai lebar dan panjang kain yang akan ditenun ini. Lebar rak ini adalah 1.2 meter, maknanya kami kena dalam projek yang dedek membuat ini, kami kena mencapai kain yang panjang 3 kali 1.2 meter. Penunun harus hitung benangnya sudah se, supaya tidak salah kira. Setiap kesalahan walaupun kecil akan menjejaskan projek tenunan pada masa melangsungkan proses yang lain. Kalau dilihat di sini, benang haruslah diatur dengan sebaik-baiknya supaya tidak susah bagi penunun nanti. The threads will have to be um, organize as much as possible so that the weaving process is not complex or, or um, full of problematic uh, problems later. Um, semua kain harus melalui proses ini. Every type of fabric will have to undergo this process. Perkakas yang digunakan patut lias, uh, patutnya tidak selalunya sama. Ada yang menegak dan ada yang juga menggunakan otomasi sebagai seperti um, barang uh, kain yang uh, dibuat di kilang. Tapi di Tanoti, saudara-saudari akan perhatikan bahawa semua perkakas kami tidak menggunakan tenaga elektrik. Semua perkakas kami diperbuat dari kayu dan semuanya menggunakan tenaga tangan sahaja. At Tanoti, we ensure that all our equipment are um, not automated or not um, powered by electricity. Sekarang tiba proses menggulung. Proses menggulung menunjukkan kerjasama community. Setiap projek menggulung kain perlukan sekurang-kurangnya empat orang. 
Semua daripada mereka harus hitung benang dengan baik dan juga atur benang dengan baik. Ini adalah papan gulung. This is the warping board. Dengan menggulung yang penting sekali adalah tension of the thread atau tegangan benang. Ditanuti, walaupun setiap orang bertanggungjawab atas projeknya sendiri, tapi ada proses pada proses menggulung ini, dia akan memerlukan rakan-rakannya cukup memberi perhatian kepada peranan mereka masing-masing. Kalau benang tidak digulung atau diatur dengan baik, seluruh loseng itu tidak akan berfungsi dengan baik dan hasil tenunan kain itu akan kurang memuaskan. Kalau begitu, pasti desain tim kami akan reject. Benang yang diikat sekarang adalah uh, hujung papan gulung dan sekarang disediakan untuk proses yang akan datang. Setiap kelompok benang itu harus diikat dalam bundle supaya senang kerja nanti untuk menghubung. So at the end of the warping board, all the threads are tied into bundles uh, to make way for the next process which is connecting the threads to the loom. Dan ini adalah set up untuk menghubung benang. Uh, we are now setting up to connect the threads to the loom. Um, dua orang bekerja untuk menghubung setiap satu benang kepada benang yang sedia ada. Pada masa itu, ketepatan adalah sungguh diperlukan. Kalau tidak tepat menghubung benang, tenunan tidak akan dapat berlaku. So it is a very precise way of um, connecting the threads. Each thread need to connect to a, exactly the other thread. Yeah, benang yang putih ini adalah benang karak atau polyester string handles. Fungsi handles ini adalah untuk memisahkan benang pada masa menenun. Dan dengan ini saya berharap saudara-saudari dapat menghargai betapa kompleks atau rumitnya proses-proses pre-weaving atau pra-tenunan ini. Untuk satu kain selalunya perlukan 5-8 hari untuk menyediakan loseng sahaja. It's a very complex process uh, in the pre-weaving side. So sekarang dalam proses menenun, Um, loseng yang siap dipasang itu baru penenun dapat memulakan tenunannya dan ini adalah beberapa kain yang dalam proses tenunan yang telah pun dirakam dengan video. Ini adalah poket yang uh, ditenun dan dipakai saya juga dalam baju saya. Ini adalah poket songket yang ditenun pada video ini. Di sini adalah um, galeri kami um, di mana kami menjual produk kraf tangan daripada 480 artisan dari Sarawak uh, meliputi anyaman rotan ke mengkuang ke hasil manik dan songket. Songket artwork adalah ini sorry ya. Songket artwork ini adalah sungguh istimewa. Songket artwork ini sungguh istimewa. Um, kami mendapat idea untuk menghasilkan songket pada tahun lepas iaitu 2020 sebab kami ingin membangkitkan semangat yang tinggi selepas PKP pertama. Artwork ini dinamakan Phoenix from the Flames atau burung Phoenix bangkit daripada api. Kami telah membuatkan video untuk merakamkan proses menghasilkan handwoven textile artwork ini uh, yang sungguh unik.
sebagai seorang pelajar bekerja atau nanti saya bersyukur sebab dah dapat kerja menenun sebab dah kecil dan suka menenun dan dapat memberi hasil penghasilan yang terbaik kepada orang lain. Project Artwork sebagai aktiviti juga untuk menghilangkan sedikit boring kami masa pandemik. Kami juga eksperimen dengan kaedah tenunan kami dan telah pun membuat projek fashion dengan leather atau kulit. Seperti baju ini. Dalam pendapat kami, bukan benang saja yang dapat melalui gigi belalang kami. Kami juga boleh memasukkan apa-apa sahaja untuk yang berbentuk serat seperti leather ini. Kami membuat koleksi tenunan leather seperti ini dan selepas itu telah menyertai International Digital Fashion Week 2021 di mana video kami diterbitkan di laman virtual IDFW pada bulan Februari awal tahun ini. Enjoy our video of leather weaves. Uh, Jackie? Hai, sorry. <laughs> Selain daripada menghasilkan produk tenunan, kami juga um, ada sekarang sudah ada pengalaman dalam menyertai Fashion Week 
Tanoti juga telah bergabung dengan APADA, iaitu Persatuan Pembangunan Kraft Tangan ASEAN untuk menganjurkan Tenun Fashion Week. Seramai 45 komuniti kraft dari negara-negara Asia Tenggara telah menyertai acara virtual ini. Kami sekarang dalam proses merancangan runway show yang akan diadakan pada bulan depan nanti dan semalam kami mengadakan models cast, casting call. Ini sedikit video yang kami membuat untuk casting call. Dan dalam acara ini juga ada terdapat satu anugerah pilihan semua. Saya menyeru semua untuk vote koleksi Tanoti. Sila pergi ke laman People Choice Award seperti ini, isi e borang ini dan seterusnya undilah tanoti. Video fashion kami juga boleh ditonton dengan butang ini. Sini di Bangkok, pasti kita akan merasa bingung sebab terdapat banyak orang menenun. Pada masa PKP2, kami juga pun terasa sungguh sengsara sebab semua pergerakan dihadkan 
dan kebanyakan dari kita menjadi tidak dapat balik kampung. Di sinilah kami coba eksperimen dalam bidang muzik dengan menggunakan perangkat seni kami. Dengan sini ketukan kain. Dan dengar pula di sini benang yang berputar. Dan kalau banyak benang yang berputar, bunyinya macam ini pula. Kalau kami membuat rentak dengan perkakas kami, beginilah bunyinya. Kalau kami masukkan sedikit latar muzik, kami akan mendapatkan komposisi yang menarik macam ini. Uh, Jackie, I think you're on mute. Uh, Jackie, we we can't actually hear the um, the vo the sound, lah, Jackie. dengan persembahan kami kau okey uh, maaf sebab ada sedikit teknikal tapi um, kami akan um, memainkan apa yang kami telah buat uh, persembahan atas pentas utama pada masa majlis pelancaran keluarga Malaysia di depan perdana menteri pada tahun uh, bulan lepas so inilah videonya dan harap dan tidak ada <laughs> tidak ada masalah teknikal Umpama selembar benang dikain, ditenun dan dijalin, akhirnya menjadi kain yang sempurna indahnya.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat. Dengan inilah akhirnya um, penerangan kami mengenai aktiviti-aktiviti tenunan yang dibuat oleh artisan Tanuti pada masa pandemik. Sekarang boleh bermulanya bermulanya soal, soal jawab session sekarang. Uh, soalan saudara-saudari boleh ditujukan pada saya di sini ataupun penenun kami yang ada di bengkel. Kami semua sekarang online. Thanks Jackie for that really detailed sharing. So saya rasa pun uh, memang kita dah ada uh, banyak jugalah soalan pada Jackie dan juga komuniti Tanoti ya. So kita akan mulakan sesi soal jawab. Uh, so untuk sesi ni kita akan mulakan dengan mereka yang dah ajukan soalan di chat box dan kita juga akan buka kepada hadirin untuk tanya terus kepada Jackie dan komuniti Tanuti secara langsung. Jadi kalau anda nak tanya uh, soalan lanjut, anda boleh uh, ke bahagian reaction. So the reaction section at the bottom, you will find that there's a uh, button untuk raise hand. Jadi boleh tekan raise hand tu nanti saya akan panggil uh, nama penanya lah um, satu demi satu ya. Um, saya juga minta uh, untuk penanya bila saya panggil, tolong pasangkan kamera dan juga unmute untuk tanya soalan uh, anda secara terus ya. Uh, so actually saya nak mulakan dengan uh, satu soalan yang um, ramai juga lah yang bertanya, uh, Jackie. So uh, this is with regards to the dye. Um, do you actually use organic dye or chemical dye? And is it natural, eco-friendly? Uh, actually, our dye is a chemical dye, but it's a Ramazol dye and Okitech certified. So it's not um, um, organic dye or natural dye because uh, we are in the city, it's very hard for us to access um, ample supply of natural dye and to achieve a consistent color all the time. Oh, so natural dyes are a little bit less consistent in terms of the color, yeah? Yes. Hmm. What about the costing as well in terms of like the, the dyes? Are natural dyes usually a bit more uh, expensive generally? Usually, usually people plant the natural dye. Hmm. So it's the cost of planting the natural dye, you know, in your kebun. Um, but natural dye can be purchased in a paste form. Uh, we don't naturally uh, normally buy natural dye in paste form. We will get the uh, planted um, natural dye materials right right okay 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 um there's also a question from nur shafinaz uh, with regard to the dyeing process maybe i can get uh, nur shafinaz to ask her question directly if you can turn on your camera and unmute yourself maybe you can ask uh, jackie your question shafinaz? yeah uh, can you hear me can you see me yes 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 you can hear me. Yes. Hold on, hi. Um, so first, I just want to thank you that um, for that. That was great. Number two, I have to turn off my virtual background because uh, I also make my own yarn. I don't weave as much because I don't have the tools in this country. It's so sad. So I guess, so I'm, that's why I asked about dyeing. It's about I dye. So, <laughs> so this is a yarn that I am literally spinning yarn right now. So... <laughs> Um, number one, I guess the question was the question that I put in the chat was uh, Tadi, like in the video, you had young, you dip the hank directly into the vet, kan? But then that video had another video was the one that you directly applied the dye on the warp. So is there an advantage and disadvantage to the to the to the method? Number one, and this one, I sorry lah, I said it one more lah. Is there a way to buy the alat penganing punya tools and stuff like that, the winding tools and such like that? Because like for hobbyists like me, it's really hard to find unless it's like overseas pulling there. Sorry for Salit kind of an extra question. So that's it. Oh, <laughs> welcome. Go ahead and ask whatever you like. Yes. <laughs> It's so nice to um, hear from a weaver. It's very rare that we hear from a real weaver or practitioner. I would love um, to talk about it more with you, but like maybe later. Kendana <laughs> <laughs> will have to connect us. Yes. Um, first of all, all our alat um, is done by a carpenter. So we can either give you uh, our carpenter's contact or we could give you the, you know, a plan and then you can uh, get a carpenter in where you are to build it for you or you can ask our carpenter or ask us and then we'll speak to our carpenter to to develop one for you it also depends on what size you're comfortable with we have various sizes that we have been using to malarai now and secondly 
Um, that artwork was actually because we wanted our weaver, Misha at that time, she was just finished training and she has never done walk painting before. So we actually undertook that project for Amisha to um, undergo uh, the most complex processes of what we go through in Tanoti. And one of them was walk painting. And basically what we wanted to do is um, achieve a gradation of the walk. Um, it's very, very fine and minute details, but you could see that the warp has um, different colors or shades of red, and that's what we wanted to achieve. Um, and, and, it, and we put it on video, and if she did it wrong, we'll all see it on video. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, Shafinas, I suppose that answers your question regards to the, um, uh, the process of the dyeing, yeah? Okay, um, so there's also another question, uh, actually a few questions uh, from uh, Amira. So I believe that's pretty interesting as well. Maybe we can have Amira uh, to come online, turn on your camera, unmute, and also ask uh, Jackie your questions. Hold on, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> And you can also ask our our weavers or art, our artisans your questions as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, there you go. Hi, Hi. Amira. Nice to see you. Hi, Amira. Hi. Uh, thank you very much, Jackie, for sharing. So I actually had two questions. So one of it was actually because the process is very intricate and also it takes quite a lot of time. So I was wondering if that, like, what was the difference between uh, something that was uh, maybe semi-automated um, and uh, as opposed to something manual. And the reason why as well is because um, if things were very much handmade, right, there could be like, say, for example, people not as interested into the art form, then it would actually not allow us to preserve the art form in the long term if, let's say, humans were not involved in it. Uh, so I'll let you answer that question first and then I'll ask my second one. Um. Yeah, you're right, you know, because everything handmade is expensive. So the challenge is uh, real and uh, we have to continuously make the woven cloth sexy, you know. Uh, we should not compromise by, um, you know, mechanizing or um, automating certain parts because, um, you know, every single thread is touched by the weaver. If, if you can see the process from her malarai to mengani, her hands, her fingers are all touching it. And, and you create a fabric that is um, inconsistent, but perfectly inconsistent um, if you come up with a perfect fabric. And we do not want to lose um, this essence of the woven cloth, the cloth that the weaver had put her time, her heart, her soul into it at that moment of time of her weaving. Um, so it's, it comes to people like us, you know, uh, the, the people who do marketing and branding of the woven cloth, you know, how do we continuously make it interesting? That's why we do videos. That's why we, um, you know, participate in fashion weeks. Uh, we play with materials. Um, and uh, we recently uh, got a grant from Chandana uh, to experiment with woven lights. So whether we can make lighting using... Um, using our looms so it's, it's what we can do and uh, and and um, pursue you know uh, to promote um, the weaving of the hand uh, we cannot yeah I, I prefer not to compromise lah I don't know if other people are but uh, at Tanoti we prefer not to compromise on the hand weaving part mm. That's life. <laughs> okay, Amira, uh, you had another question as well, I believe. Yes. Uh, so my second question is, um, because especially in Southeast Asia, uh, Tanunan is actually something that um, is our heritage, right? So I just mm -hmm. wanted to understand from your end, what would you say is the biggest difference in terms of um, Malaysian Songket and Tanunan as compared to um, the ones in other Southeast Asian countries? Oh my God, 
everything. <laughs> Everything, um, you know, in the process of um, organizing Tenun Fashion Week, we realized that the diversity of weaves is incredible. Uh, people are weaving with money, with beads um, in Laos and um, in Vietnam. Uh, people are weaving with uh, banana or pineapple fibers in the Philippines and in Indonesia. Uh, people are weaving with leaves, which is ulap doyo in also Indonesia. So basically, it depends on the climate and the culture of the people, you know. Um, a, a lot of people have um, uh, different cultures, so they will weave different patterns. Uh, in Philippines, there is a, a, a pattern that wards off evil spirits, and they weave it. Uh, in the Iban culture, uh, the pua kumbu is to wrap the seventh head, you know, by the head hunters. So they will weave patterns to enclose the evil spirits of the heads or, or to wrap the baby, a uh, newborn baby. Um, so every community will have a reason to weave what they weave. And it becomes incredible uh, throughout Southeast Asia. I think they, they should be a tour on, <laughs> on uh, the weaving techniques and the weaving communities, um, especially in Southeast Asia, because there's so many adat, you know, and, and pantang, and it's incredible. Thank you so much. Yeah, I believe uh, that answers your question, eh, Nurul Amira. Okay, uh, ini saya ada soalan untuk penenun-penenun kita ya. Um, actually, saya pun um, nak tahu juga macam mana anda bermula uh, minat untuk belajar um, craft tenun ini. Uh, itu nombor satu. Ada berapa soalan lain, lain yang um, saya akan tanya juga lah. Jadi kita mulakan dengan itu dulu lah. Nurul mau menjawab? Ah, silakan silakan. Uh, tak dengar lah, ada dah dah mula menjawab ke? Mic dia jauh. Yeah, bring the mic closer. Okay, boleh testing ke? Hello. Um, hi, hello. Hi. Uh, saya berminat sebab uh, tak pernah apa tak tak pernah hello tak pernah menemu yeah. macam macam kain tenunan lah hmm okay jadi um, selalunya kalau nak belajar tenun ni um, mula umur berapa ya dan berapa lama sebenarnya masanya nak nak ambil untuk betul betul mahirkan diri dengan dengan um, tenunan ni Oh, lepas, lepas, habis SCM. Dan berapa lama masa untuk belajar tenunan ni? Ada, um, saya pernah kerja sini setahun, tahun lebih lah. Lepas tu berhenti, lepas tu masuk sini balik lah. Sebab nak minat lebih yang paling banyak. Um, banyak uh, kemahiran. Okay, okay. Um, selalu dalam dalam proses nak belajar tenun ni kan, proses apa yang paling paling susah sekali nak belajar? Antara sebab banyak kan dia punya proses dia daripada benang lah dan sebagainya lah. Bagi uh, bagi anda semua mana yang yang paling susah sekali untuk belajar atau untuk uh, untuk betul betul mahirkan? Eton, ya. Yeah. Proses yang paling susah bagi saya lah uh, songket serawak lah sebab dia menggunakan sifir. Sifir? Ah. Uh. Macam mana tu dia gunakan sifir? Sifir. Dia ada pengiraan pengiraan dia setiap petak tu dia ada pengiraan. Oh sebab nak kira benang tu ya? Ah. Uh. Uh. Satu okay, petak okay. dah ada sifir dia sendiri And then second pun dia kena tukar ya, dia, dia akan berlainan Dia akan berlainan, tidak sama 
Okay, yeah. jadi kalau nak nak belajar yang bab untuk sifir tu, nak belajar macam mana nak buat kain tenun sarawak tu je, selalunya berapa lama masanya? Depend. Depend design lah. Depend design ikut kefahaman, kefahaman seorang-seorang. Seorang. Kalau dia jenis yang kalau cepat belajar, dia akan cepat pandai. Kalau dia jenis slow, dia akan ambil masa <laughs> untuk, untuk, untuk mahir lah. mahirkan <laughs> dalam sifir. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, okay. Kalau kalau yang paling uh, paling mudah sekali pun berapa lama? Yang paling mudah pun nak belajar? Terengganu. Terengganu. Terengganu, Terengganu paling mudah? Terengganu. Itu apa? Dalam masa sebulan boleh belajar ke? Uh, boleh. Boleh. Tak boleh ya? Hmm. Menarik, menarik. <laughs> okay. Um, so there is also uh, other questions I think uh, from Arlene. So uh, Arlene, she has a question for, uh, I think this one is for Jackie, right? Um, so she's wondering whether Tenun was originally inspired from certain native groups in Sarawak because there are many uh, native groups in Sarawak. Are, are there any specific ones that are inspired, uh, that inspires Tanoti in their craft? Um, actually, Tanoti weaves both Songket Trunganu and Songket Sarawak. And... Um, Songket Sarawak didn't actually originate from Sarawak. Um, we, Sarawak before was under the Brunei Sultanate. So um, the Brunei Sultanate covered the entire area of Sarawak and also a little bit of Kalimantan. And um, in that era, we learned this particular technique of menyongket, which is menghitung sife. Uh, so the songket in Sambas, the songket in Brunei and Sarawak all use hitong sifei. Um, and, and actually it's the Malays. Yeah, <laughs> the ethnic group is Malay. Interesting, that's very interesting. Okay, um, there is also another question from Nalin. So if we can get Nalin to uh, maybe turn on her camera and uh, ask directly. Can we have Nalin? Or okay, hi. Hi Nalin. Hi Nalin, you're on mute. Maybe you can unmute. Hi. Go. Yeah. Uh, just now I show you my work. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, it's very nice. Wow, another paper. Yeah, my 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 sweaters. Wow. <laughs> and there's a lot of things lah. So I started five years back, and also my interest that started uh, when I was in a secondary school taught by my teacher. But I always wanted to learn about this viewing. And my question is, uh, is that any age limit? <laughs> uh, oh, age, no. No age limit, right? Uh, okay. Uh, so, and also the, the, apa tu yang, uh, food, uh, to, apa tu, the wood, uh, the Hitler. Can we buy? And how can we purchase if you want to bring to uh, Malaysia, Semenanjung? Um, it's very easy. A lot of our equipment are done by the carpenter. So um, you are talking about the eater, right? Ah, yeah. The, 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 yeah, the, 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 the. Um, yeah it's, it's also produced uh, by the carpenter, but the gigi belalang, uh -huh. I think you need, uh, we need to source it. Uh, I'm not so sure where you source it in uh, KL. Uh -huh. But it's also not very hard to source. It's not a it's it's not a high tech material, you know. Uh, it, it's just the gigi. It's so good. you need, yeah, you need to figure out uh, whether your gigi is going to be metal or bulo. Which one is yeah. better? <laughs> we use metal. Metal. And uh, but in Thailand, a lot of them use a, a bamboo reed. Oh. So either way, cost. Depends on your carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, roughly. <laughs> Just wanted to know. <laughs> I, I think it's about uh, 400 ringgit or 500 ringgit to do the entire rangka. You know? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the ketenun. Okay, another thing. The benang, right? Uh, we are using songket. Songket, right? Uh, other than songket, like, do we pernah buat tak sari ke? Uh, with, with the cotton banaras? Yeah, we we have uh, we use a lot of different types of benang. Uh -huh. So, uh, ada benang sutra, which is this one. Uh -huh. That is the one we use for songket, right? Uh, we use anything for songket. Oh, anything. I mean, any, yeah. So, we use any type of um, 
fiber that can go through our gigi belalang, mm -hmm. our, our metal reed. So we can use thin one like silk, and then this one is bamboo. Mm, bamboo, wow. Fiber. Uh, yeah, it's a bamboo fiber. And then we even use um, uh, fishing line even, like nylon or, or leather, as we said, you know. So uh, we have uh, many, many types of fiber. Uh, yes, obviously, we also use cotton and we also use polyester if we need to. Yeah. I think same as you. Every time you, you need a, <laughs> whatever you want to weave, you can uh, get, you know, the, the every time, everything that comes in the form of a fiber, you can weave. Yeah. Thank you, Nalin. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's also, I think, another follow-up question from Shafinath uh, with regards to the difference uh, in the Songkit history as well. So maybe you want to ask directly, Shafinath. Oh, okay. Hi. Wait, hold on. Never mind. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Um, with regards to Yang, so, you know, I'm going to try to learn a little bit here and there it's about, you know, um, I make thread, so I don't know if you notice. No one makes thread. The cut maritime Southeast Asia, ni kita beli cotton dengan silk everything directly from either China, Thailand, or India. Kan kita tak ada industry buat benang sendiri. So anyway, long story short, that's why. Um, but the question is, kalau so di, di Riau, di Riau pun dia kata dia dengan Riau dengan Palembang dia dia belajar um, songkit tu pun daripada orang Terengganu juga. And then you mentioned this is masa Kesultanan Sulu ke during in Sarawak when when you were, when the Malays of Sarawak were learning songkit. Brunei. Brunei, sorry. So that one, that time, um, so kalau di Riau and also elsewhere, they pun kata, um, dia belajar pun actually via orang Bugis. Is that the same in in Sarawak? Orang Melayu Sarawak belajar daripada uh, orang Bugis ke? Like, uh, tenunan songkit ni? I'm not so sure about the history of our songkit Sarawak, but um, it was the Majapahit era that, uh, that, that, um, Brunei had like trade, you know. Yeah. So we're not so sure whether it's uh, really uh, the Bugis or, or Sri Vijaya. Well, you know, if if it, if it, if it's of interest to you, if you if you are curious to know, I can at least tell you a little bit much about that bit. So that was a connection with the Indian punya textile lah. Kita belajar buat songkit ni pun sebab kita nak buat something local that can we that we can afford. It's a long story because it was so hard to get um the Banarasi as uh, our silk weaves um because you know they come white once a year kan tengok tengok the um the trade right. So that was the story if if you too. But no orang Bugis not the not the um not the civilization. I mean orang Bugis as in the pedagang lah the pedagang and the people because you know Bugis were traveling so far sampai Sabah sampai up north in peninsula pun juga so I was just wondering about that but anyway never mind thank you but um in our technique of songket weaving songket means a uh, supplementary weft you know yeah. when you are yeah. weaving your line you introduce a new thread right yeah um the technique is pretty um similar to jamdani yes yes that's right yeah. that that was the that was the that was the indian textile that southeast asians were trying to um Emulate lah, <laughs> and that's how our various songkits came about. Yes, yes. So okay, so, okay. So, I'm done. Yeah, okay. So it came. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. It makes sense now. It's about memang kesultanan yeah. Melayu various in various places were um trying to do that. So uh, Jamdani is in uh Bengal, I think. Mm -hmm. East West Bengal. That one, yeah. you know, it's like how nasi lemak is being fought over by Singaporeans, Malaysians, and Indonesians. Jamdani is being fought over in Bangladesh, Pakistan, and India. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, the same area before it became Bangladesh, exactly. Pakistan, and India. Yeah, yeah, now they fight about it. But who owns the, the cloth? It's so funny. Just like us. <laughs> we don't fight. We just manyara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. I, wow, this is really fascinating because we're going into history, you know, the roots of Songkit itself and, and all of that. Um, actually, one interesting question as well, because, you know, you also kind of infuse the idea of like music as part of your tenunan. You know, it, 
in a way it becomes a kind of a performance. So how did that come about this idea of the orchestra tenun? So this is actually a question by Sarah. Hi Sarah. <laughs> um, I think it's because of COVID, you know, um, in COVID, uh, it's really boring for the girls. Uh, they weave songket and then they stay in the asrama and then the next day they weave songket, they stay in the asrama. They can't go out because they can't go home uh, because they can't merentas the era. So every day they are at in-house and it's really boring. So we thought, oh, you know, let's do a project, you know, like a co-curriculum. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know. Suka kah kamu orang buat music? <laughs> Saya pun tidak tanya. Oh lah, nak tanya juga tadi sebenarnya kan. Dengan komuniti Tanuti, tiba-tiba nak kena buat music yeah. lah kan. Nak, nak kena buat performance, persembahan semua. Macam mana perasaan tu bila-bila nak nak buat music? Actually, who came up with the music and like the rhythm semua tu? Uh, we we hired uh, people to do it. So we oh. hired Bob Eldrick from Ed Adal, who's a percussionist there, uh, nice. to compose the beats. Yeah. Okay. Ha, ada komen tak daripada penenun kita hari ni? <laughs> ada kelainan lah. Ada kelainan hmm. daripada first time buat uh, alat alat muzik menggunakan alat tenun. Alat tenun. Hmm. Yang itu pun berapa lama ya yang untuk praktis apa ni daripada mula belajar sampai sampai kepada uh, performance tu? Berapa lama? Rasanya ah. seminggu Dalam seminggu cuma sekali macam tu saja. Seminggu lah. sekali latihan dia sekali. Ah. Seminggu sekali latihan dalam sebulan. Dalam sebulan lah. Sebulan. Ui, hebat lah seminggu sekali dalam sebulan dah boleh perform terus. <laughs> Menarik, hebat hebat. Lalu bagus. Okay, um, all right. There is also uh, another question. Uh, actually, this is also uh, with regards to the dying as well uh, from Aisha. So she has asked that uh, actually when you when you create the mix, right? Do you already know what the end color is going to be, or do you actually kind of like do a bit of a testing first, and that does like the conditions of the weather actually affect it as well, like uh, temperature, humidity? Does it affect the color? I think I will pass the answer to uh, the question to Veronica and Mas uh, yeah. to answer. Uh, ya, yeah, bila kamu orang die, macam mana bolehkah kamu uh, menetapkan warna itu atau kena testing dulu? Kena testing, kena testing dulu. Uh, testing Kami dulu. Kami akan buat uh, sampel Test. dulu uh -huh. untuk test warna. Okay, kalau dah okay, kalau baru, dah okay, baru proses, proses ke situ buat yang buat dying. dying. Okay, hmm. then kalau macam... Um, Kalau weather tu kan sama ada dia macam panas ke sejuk ke tu akan ubah color ke tidak? Ya, betul. Dia akan efek. Dia akan efek untuk uh, perubahan color hmm. juga. Termasuk suhu oh, waktu termasuk kita. Termasuk suhu waktu dai. Uh, perlu jaga suhu. Hmm, menarik, menarik, menarik. Okay, okay. Um, kita juga ada soalan daripada Jodi. So Jodi asks whether you have considered working with international fashion designers to use their weaving in a fashion line. So basically to use the Tanuti weaves in international um, uh, fashion designers their, uh, in their lines. Lah. We would love to. We would love to be able to collaborate with a, an international fashion designer mm. and help them produce a line that is uh, beautiful and sustainable and inclusive. Actually, Jackie, so I have a follow-up question to that as well. Uh. How do you find the popularity of uh, Songket, right? Locally versus internationally, do you find that there's a difference in the way that people accept it? Or maybe nowadays, do, would you say that uh, Songket um, takes a bit of work maybe locally to like make it a bit more trending, whereas, you know, overseas, they find Songket, it's like, wow, you know, it's, it's a, a novelty kind of, uh, kind of art. Actually, we feel that uh, our local market has a deeper understanding of Songket. Uh, we don't, we can't seem to be able to educate the overseas market on uh, the intricacy and the complexity of our work, um, except those in Southeast Asia, you know, Singapore, Thailand, um, Indonesia, they know, right? But when we go beyond, you know, uh, to Western countries, 
um, it is very hard for them to comprehend um, that number one, that we are weaving entirely by hand uh, with no electricity. And uh, number two, why is it so expensive? So uh, the local market or the regional market is more appreciative. Right. Much right. more. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you usually kind of like position yourself in that sense? Uh, because I guess this goes back to the previous question of like, you know, automation versus, you know, handcrafting, right? So, I mean, is, is there a certain way that you try to basically like justify why this is actually an important contribution to the community and, and so forth to maybe like the more international markets? Uh, we will attend... Uh meetings like yours, <laughs> like Chandana Arts class to educate, but uh, it's, a, it's a big process of education. That's why we make so much content and, uh, and that's why we have a social media outlet where we, uh, we, we use it as an education, more right. as a selling, more right. than selling. And, um, and the world needs to know that uh, we, it is a, it's a, is everyone's responsibility to uh, preserve this tradition and this identity. Um, if we don't preserve it now, we would lose it next generation. Mm. So everybody should put in their effort individually to help make it happen. Mm. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, actually, what about local fashion designers? Do you find that it's easier to approach them to uh, include weaving in, in their lines as well? Yes. Yeah. Local fashion designers. Um, local fashion designers are very, very interested in working with the woven cloth. Um, when we are doing the Tanun Fashion Week, we have uh, local designers working with local communities, you know? Uh, uh, Murdi working with Aspok uh, in Indonesia, uh, Wayo Abraham working with Seka Kawung in Indonesia. In Malaysia, we have Edric Ong working with Rumah Gari, Melinda Omar working with um, Rumah Richard. Um, yeah, so actually quite a few. In, 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 uh, in Philippines, we have Dita Sandiko working with a community, uh, Tupac Baras. And then we have Jean D working with the Custom Made Craft Center uh, in the Philippines. Um, so we actually have uh, many, many fashion designers regionally are very interested in working with the woven cloth. And we hope that we can have more Malaysian designers uh, also interested, you know. Um, a, a lot of fabrics can be made in Malaysia and, um, and project the Malaysian identity. And it's important that we do so. Great, great. Um, there is actually also another question from Arlene Ibrahim. So she asked, how do you see the potential of this local uh, Tenon Songkit industry in the future? Since the next generations are heading towards digitalization, such as like esports, VR games, drones, etc. So what are kind of like the challenges if, if you can think about it in the context of uh, Tenon Songkit? Uh, what are your views on this, uh, uh, Jackie? I think Songket needs to be relevant. You know, Songket is like um, any genre, like architecture, you know, you have architecture of the 60s, of the 70s, of the 80s, you have architecture of today. And then Songket in the 1960s looks exactly the same as in the year 2000. So obviously the audience is losing interest or, you know, the market is uh, aging, you know. <laughs> so what we need to do is to make Songket relevant and make Songket sexy again. And that's how we are doing it with leather, you know, um, and that's how we're actually um, playing with patterns and producing um, interesting artwork, maybe using Songket and uh, playing with materials as well. Okay, okay. Um, there's another question by Judy. So she asked, what do you suggest to mobilize the local fashion designers to use local weave Songket instead of going out of Malaysia? Sorry, again. <laughs> okay, so uh, basically, how do you suggest to uh, um, make the local fashion designers a bit more accepting or um, to use local weave song kit instead of going out to the international uh, market out of Malaysia to get uh, maybe weaving um, from, from outside? We cannot force people to do things. 
I don't know, maybe the government should encourage it with uh, tax concessions, maybe tax deductions. Um, another way would be to create uh, more branding on, on the woven cloth. So uh, we need people who can mobilize, um, you know, a uh, movement, you know. And, and Chindana is uh, very well placed in doing that. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, there is another question by Nurul Amira. So Amira, maybe you want to ask uh, Jackie directly. Hi, uh, so another one of my follow-up questions is, some of us are actually working professionals and uh, we love to learn about, you know, batik, songkit making, all these kind of traditional crafts, right? But unfortunately, like the Institute Craft Tangan does have um, like programs that spend three years yeah, so mm. you do have to like, you know, leave your professional job and go to a hostel and stuff like that. It's not really feasible for us. So just wondering if there, are you planning workshops in Peninsula, Malaysia, especially uh, for us to sort of be able to learn about it? Uh, we are based in Kuching, unfortunately, and we have Songket weaving training programs. Uh, we have, uh, it's not three years, but it's eight months. And in eight months, um, trainees are required to finish two projects, one a uh, Songket Trunganu piece and one a uh, Songket Sarawak piece. Uh, Nurul actually graduated from our training program. Bila? Tiga tahun sudah kah? Lupa sudah. So uh, we, we, it's a program that's um, actually for young girls who want to make songket weaving as a career. Um, so possibly not like people like yourself, sorry, Amira. But, um, but we have um, things that we have designed for tourism where we get, uh, we, we set up a, a loom for anyone and then they use it to weave their own souvenir. So it depends on how long you want to weave and we charge on a per day basis and we also offer training and the threads and you weave whatever piece you want and then you take it home with you. So a lot of people weave maybe bookmarks in a day uh, with their own name or their own pattern and then they go home. Um, and uh, some people weave maybe their wedding veil or you know something like that and then, and then they take a bit longer. So, so we have um, things like that where you weave your own product. Uh, but not really um, a formal training, just something that we do. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I think uh, you're right as well, because people like me, if we're, you know, full-time professionals, it doesn't make sense as well for us to, you know, if we're not as something, we want to turn it into a career, then it's not something that we should be looking at. So it's great to know that you have like one-day workshops or per-day workshops where we can, you know, learn a little bit more and have our hands on as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. And please do come to Kuching and uh, you can take a loom and weave your own barang. I'm from Brunei. Like, I, I'm living in Kuala Lumpur, but originally I was born and raised in uh, Brunei, but I'm Malaysian. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But I'll definitely come over and I'll find you. That's yeah, very interesting. Please do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ya, yeah, uh, so if anybody has questions, ada sesiapa ada soalan untuk penenun kita pun dipersilakan boleh raise hand ataupun uh, letakkan soalan di chat box juga. Um, I also have actually a question, ya. Yeah. Um, so, Jackie, how do you find the interest in young folks in, in learning this art of uh, tenun? Because it is very intricate, it is very complex. So how do you find that there's an acceptance or even maybe like an interest from the younger community to learn this, this kind of um, skill? I think it really needs to do with uh, interest, you know. Harus ada minat. But this is a question that we should also ask our young weavers. Nurul, macam mana kamu dapat masuk ke dalam tanoti? Siapa yang ajak? Uh, dari Kak Ramla. Kak Ramla. Oh. <laughs> Kak Ramla was um, our first um, weaving supervisor in 2012. Tapi kamu tidak 
sama kampung kan dengan Ramla? Tak, tak. Sama dengan Mimi. Oh, oh tapi Ramla yang pujuk kamu. Eh, dah lah. Sebab awak memang tengok apa ni songket tu lepas tu awak rasa memang macam nak 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 berminat untuk belajar menenun walaupun sebenarnya benda tu bukanlah benda yang mudah kan? Oh, oh. Hmm, okey okey. Dan Eton, Eton macam mana kamu masuk? Saya dari kakak, kakak kamu. Ah. Ya. Yeah. Oh, daripada kakak. Kakak ah. sendiri juga penunun lah jadi dia dia tolong ajarlah. Ya. Yeah. Oh, okey. Kakak okay. kakak dia ada di bengkel Asa Misa tu kamu. Mana dia? <laughs> so uh, we have a few uh, uh, sisters pairing. Usually when one sister is good, the other one will also be good in weaving. Hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, that oh, is hello. <laughs> <laughs> Jadi untuk kakaknya pula belajar dari mana? Dari yayasan. Oh, Jason, oh, isn't the program that Tanuti ran? Was, is that right? No, no, no. Um, actually, Tanuti was set up because we wanted to take over the girls from Yayasan Tuanku No Zahira. So, um, at that time, uh, YTNZ was under the Raja Pumaisuri Agong. But when she was no longer Raja Pumaisuri Agong, Um, the coaching workshop didn't have any more funding, so Tanuti was set up to take them over. So Misa adalah dari uh, yayasan masa yayasan kan? She was our core team. Yeah, the pioneer weaver, the original Flanny. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Uh, so kita ada soalan daripada Dayang Nur Izati. Uh, dia dah angkat tangan tu. Jadi kalau kita boleh dapatkan Dayang Nur Izati, uh, tolong pasangkan kamera unmute. Hi. 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 Hi, sorry, I'm in the middle of something. I can't turn on my B camera. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine uh, yeah. Hi, Jackie. I always follow you on Instagram. It's so fun to see all the posting. Uh, I just wanted to ask, when you mentioned about wedding veil, is it kerinkam, you mean? Uh, songket. Songket. So, do, can, uh, how can we... Can we learn about kerinkam at your place? No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> are you so, from Sarawak? Yeah, yeah, I'm from Kuchi. <laughs> oh, there are so many places that uh, do kerinkam. Maybe you should ask them. Oh, we we I... don't do kerinkam, unfortunately. Next time, no. maybe. Ada no. orang minat ke uh, buat kerinkam? Saya sangat minat. <laughs> <laughs> nak buat keringkam <laughs> but it's okay uh, maybe one day maybe I can visit the place and yeah it's interesting that you guys really have good facilities for songket weaving there <laughs> yeah silakan you're most okay. welcome to <laughs> is it suitable for working a full time punya person <laughs> at the classes oh, on no, the you, weekend you or Uh, you can arrange your own time actually because uh, uh, it, it's up to you. So if you want to do a project, we will let you do a project, but you come and go as you wish. Lah. All right. We have a few people like that. Yeah, they're working on their own project. Okay, thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you, Dayang. <laughs> great, great, great. Uh, okay, so Amira pun uh, ada another question. She basically asked whether uh, you can share some resources Uh, Jackie, if you know um, of uh, you know, so that we can all learn how to preserve the art form, if there are any la, publicly available resources. Wow, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think because a lot of these things are memang like on hand practice, kan? Yeah, there are many books on Songke, that's mm. for sure. Mm. Uh, but uh, reading a book doesn't necessarily mean that we can preserve the art form. It's, It's just a documentation. Uh, you, you will need to buy a loom and weave at home. <laughs> That's very true. And probably have like, you know, a proper teacher to guide you lah how to do it, kan? Yes, for yeah. sure. 
yeah 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 okay, okay. actually um yeah another question this is from me lah. i'm just wondering right so in terms of like the design of the tenun itself where where does it actually come from it um itu memang asal daripada community sendiri ataupun kalau macam katalah penenun tu sendiri yang design daripada mula sampai akhir ataupun you actually have like other designers to kind of like do that how how is the process of like making these designs and the ideation of the craft and so forth we have a design team Memang so we, we design and then the weavers will weave. Veronica, angkat tangan. Jangan malu. <laughs> oh, Veronica, okay, design her too. Yeah, she's in our design team. Mm, okay, okay. Veronica has a degree in uh, textile design from Unimas. Fantastic. Okay, okay. So, Veronica, <laughs> kalau macam dari segi design tu kan, apa inspirasi Veronica untuk design-design uh, Tanoki ni? Ada tak? <laughs> <laughs> Mesti ada datang ilham idea tu kan Daripada, daripada asal dia tu Selalunya daripada mana Ataupun macam uh, Veronica sendiri macam Bangun betul macam Oh rasa ha, Ni menarik kalau kita nak buat design macam ni Actually uh, The team is bigger than her <laughs> So ha. So um, We we have a head designer, Wan Fen. Uh, she's not here today. It's a Sunday. Hmm. Uh, tapi, <laughs> tapi uh, Monica is assistant designer. So uh, Wan Fen is the boss. Dia yang bagi uh, corak. Then uh, Monica has to do the planning of the 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 wow. design lah. So hmm. um, boleh ambil satu graph untuk mereka lihat. So yeah, every, kalau dia boleh tunjuk. Yeah, so every weaver will have a a plan. Uh, before she starts weaving, uh, she will have to follow the the plan lah, the graph. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the the songket is dikira dengan menggunakan peta. Oh. Petak lima benang kan, macam. I see, wow. Yeah. So that's Veronica's job. <laughs> okay. So does that mean kalau lah kata macam dalam proses design ni kan, when you're designing it, do you also need to kind of like um specify how exactly you would go about the technique of actually creating that design on the textile? Because obviously you know dengan si Fela apa semua tu. Or you know, by the design, the 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 um the weavers alone will be able to figure out how to do that. Uh, actually, penenun kena cari uh, center dulu, kan? Center, yeah. Ni, ya, saya tidak faham. Saya dengar kamu orang cakap saja. Cari center, <laughs> kemudian uh, then they plot the design di atas kain. Oh, so they plot the design atas kain dulu. Nah, basic dia Bukan dia macam dia. on the head, like uh, kena kira benang kan? Kena hmm. benang. Kira perak, perak, perak gigi, gigi belalang. belalang. Lepas tu dia orang beli saya center. Dari center tu, baru dia orang akan mula kira darat dari kira. ikut graf. Ya. Hmm, itu basic okay. dia lah. Basic. Dia orang perlu, uh, dari gigi belalang tu dia orang cari uh, center. Lepas tu baru dia orang boleh mula tenun. Hmm. Pastu baru mereka boleh menyongket. So maknanya semua orang di Tanoti adalah pakar matematik. Yeah. <laughs> boleh tahan lah sebab kena guna sifir semua kan? Ya. Yeah. Okay. Dan kira benang. So satu meter benang tu ada berapa ribu satu meter lebar berapa ribu benang uh, urat benang. Kalau yang biasa kami kira untuk inci. 42 inci, mereka perlu kira 556 ataupun 555. Petak. Petak. Oh. Dalam Dan satu petak lima benang kan? Ya. Yeah. Yeah. So kali lima lagi. So in terms of number of threads, it's like 2,000 threads. Ya. Yeah. Wow. It's very very intricate lah. So yeah, um, we would like to open the uh, floor up to any last questions uh, from the audience, the participants. Kalau ada, boleh raise hand, boleh tanya kepada Jackie dan juga kepada community.
Then uh, I also just want to acknowledge, I mean, there's a lot of sharing going on in the chat box. Uh, so I really appreciate that uh, from, from everybody involved, uh, particularly from Arlene and I think, you know, uh, Shafinas as well. I think a lot of people are just like very invested in, uh, in this session. Yeah, so <laughs> it's very, very nice to see. Lah. So ada apa, apa soalan terakhir daripada hadirin semua ke, daripada peserta? Kalau tak ada, mungkin kita uh, move on kepada maybe some last thoughts, ada pesanan-pesanan terakhir ke uh, daripada community Tanoti sendiri dan juga Jackie sebelum kita uh, akhiri sesi ni. Daripada penerun kita, ada ada apa perkara-perkara nak, nak share ke, nak berkongsi pesanan? <laughs> shy. Everyone is so nervous Apalah. Kami faham benda-benda ni bukannya tiap-tiap hari buat kan ah, Tak apa, tak apa, faham, faham. Uh, ah, tu. So Aileen pun ada tanya, ada pesanan tak kepada warga-warga um, Malaysia kita ni Untuk kita lebih appreciate uh, kepada seni tenunan Oh maybe Jackie you wanna you wanna start? Um, I would like to uh, make a call for everybody to support local handicrafts. Yeah. Uh, it's very important because um, when you support a handicraft, it is actually warisan dari turun temurun, you know. Um, it's, it's a handed down from uh, the technique and the craft and the methodology is handed down from... Uh, parent to daughter to daughter to daughter and and um if we don't um become the market for this handicraft then it will stop at that generation and then that will be it you know and uh, it, the world is so full of uh, content right now and a lot of content um do not promote handicraft so i think it is very important that we try and um um, put more content out there, you know, for everyone. Um, every time you buy a handcrafted item, um, do give it a shout out, you know. Somebody put their heart and soul into it and um, she's giving you the technique of her mother and her grandmother. So I, I hope that uh, it, is, it is something that people think about, you know, rather than the latest fashion, but, you know, something that is um, made by hand. Understood. You know, something like that. Yeah. 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 Very valid points. Because at the end of the day, this is also about preserving culture more so than just the textile and just the fashion as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Jackie. Terima kasih juga kepada komuniti oh, uh, penenun kita kejap. Ya? Ah, kita ada soalan lagi satu pula daripada Kua Michael. How do you get your mentees, workers, weaver? Do you post the job in Job Street or other connection, family interests? Uh, um, and friends. It's, it's usually word of mouth. Oh, word of so, mouth. So, uh, siapa yang datang melatih dengan kami, uh, silakan datang. Kami tidak akan reject sesiapa pun. Uh, dan, uh, ya, yeah, supaya dapat uh, meningkatkan kemahiran atau, men, you know, mendapat sedikit pengetahuan lah dengan um, dengan proses dan kaedah kami buat tenunan songket. Mm. Uh, yeah, so we are very non-exclusive. Anybody who wants to join us should join, uh, and uh, we we don't really advertise. Uh, we put it on our social media. That's it, and uh, we know definitely it has to do with minat. Kalau tidak minat, I think they don't last one day. <laughs> yeah. How how long would you say like the minimum number of uh, time or a minimum span of time in order for them to kind of like learn the basics of weaving with you lah, even if they were to like take up training with you? Kursus kami adalah 8 bulan kan? Ooh. So yeah, our formal kursus is 8 bulan, yeah, 8 months. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so uh, I think, yeah, you have uh, all the information you need. So 8 months, if you're really interested uh, to join and really learn the art of weaving with Anuti Crafts. So thank you once again to uh, Jackie. Terima kasih juga kepada komuniti penenun kita hari ini. 
yang berkongsi pengalaman sendiri. Uh, jadi um, untuk hadirin semua, jangan lupa untuk uh, undi tanuti, tanuti di Tenun Fashion Week at uh, www.tenunfashionweek.com and you can go to People's Choice Award and pick Tanuti. Um, and also the link has been given in the chat box for you as well. Uh, peringatan juga open arts classes uh, masih berlangsung seminggu lagi jadi boleh layari www.bskl.com.my untuk sesi-sesi selanjutnya. In fact, minggu depan kita ada sesi tentang muzik gambus pada 19 November bersama adik guru Muhammad Razik Osman. Jadi kalau ada kelapangan uh, boleh register dan juga join kita untuk sesi, uh, sesi tu lah. Um, dan kita juga akan berikan pautan kepada survey dalam chat box jadi uh, sila uh, isikan untuk kami juga sebagai feedback. Saya saya ucapkan sekali lagi terima kasih kepada semua yang hadir untuk sesi ini. Saya rasa memang macam-macam perbincangan yang berlaku. Bukan saja di sini tapi juga di chat box pun ada macam-macam perkongsian. Uh, dan terima kasih untuk semua. Moga kita jumpa lagi di sesi-sesi lain. Thank you everyone. Thank you.